Hello there. Welcome to the, the learning of engineering tutorials video lecture. In this video lecture, we are trying to develop the certain mathematical model which is help to find out the, the strength of a wired cylinder vessel. As we know, so this is going to be called wire winding of thin cylinders. We know in the last video lectures we have seen there is a two types of stresses are acting. The one is going to be circumferential stress which is acting in the direction of the circumferential. Second one the longitudinal stress which is acting in the longitudinal direction. And due to this reason when the circumferential stress is going to be acting the material will going to be start to failure is taking place in this direction that means in the longitudinal direction. When the longitudinal stress is going to be acting the material will going to be fail in the cross section wise. So that means the material will going to be the cross section wise that means the circumferentially the failure will occur. It's very clear that from the definition the circumferential stress is equal to two times the longitudinal stresses. From it is clear this is going to be the main cause for the failure of the system. So if you want to store more fluid inside the cylindrical vessels it is required we certain methods are going to be following. So those methods are going to be improving the, the strength of the material and then automatically it will store the more energy. In this case we are adopting the one method is that the wire winding method. In this case what happened? So in this figure we have shown this is going to be the cylinder and the red lines are going to be indicating your the wire is winding to that cylinders. So then what will happen in this case? So the wires generally they are subjected to the tensile forces when the pressure is going to be moving in the outward direction those loads are going to be carried the thickness of this material and that is transferred to the wires and these wires are going to be subjected to the tensile forces at the same time it is going to be applying certain compressive forces on that material that we will see here. So this is going to be indicating the wire winding situation to the thin cylindrical vessels and when I am going to be making the cross section of this member so then I am going to be taking the cross section of this member that is called full cross section. So there we can see this is going to be the internal diameter of your vessel. This is going to be the thickness of that material the cylindrical vessel and this red lines are going to be indicating red circular lines are going to be indicating the the wires winding onto the cylindrical vessel. Now what I am going to do here? I want to find out the mathematical model how much amount of the stresses are going to be developing that means here these wires are subjected to the tensile forces when it comes to the thick cylinders so then what happened that is going to be applying the compressive force on that material. So I am going to be taking that material here so then I can find out over here. So that what I am going to say sigma w is nothing but that is the tensile stress acting in the wires that is going to be stress in wire I can say. So next what I am going to say Fw is nothing but your the force acting the force in wire right and Dw is nothing but the diameter of wire right. So then N is going to be number of turns. So can you see here the number of turns we are going to be winded to the cylinder. So then what other parameters we are going to be using that we will discuss over here. These are the main parameters we are using including we know the P is going to be the pressure acting inside the cylinder that's already we discussed and D is going to be internal diameter of the system and the T is the thickness of the cylinder and the next one L is going to be the length of the cylinder. We know sigma 1 as well as the sigma 2. Now we are trying to find out the stresses existed in the wire system. So we know the stress is equal to the load by area I am going to be taking. The load by the unit area I can consider here. So what is the load here that I am going to be taking? The load is nothing but your tensile load. That indicated letter is going to be the Fw the divided by area I have to take it. Now which area we have to take it here? That is the area of the wire. We know the diameter of the wire is going to be like this. So that means it is consist of Dw is the diameter of the wire 
at the same time it consists of number of turns we do have so right so that i'm going to be taking the diameter of the wire is equal to pi by 4 d w square and what we are going to write in here that i'm going to be taking the number of turns that going to be multiplied with n so from this equation i can try to find out the tensile forces in the wire that's going to be sigma w the here is the pi by 4 and here is the d w square and i can write it then how could, how could you find out the number of turns we know the number of turns is equal to so how could you find out the number of turns here it is going to be spread in over a length of the cylinder suppose so then what happened the length of the cylinder i have taken and divided by the diameter of the wire i am going to be taking that is the dw so that i can find out the number of turns winded on the cylindrical vessel so that i am going to be substituting here fw is equal to this is going to be the sigma w pi by 4 dw square and here is going to be n is nothing but length of the cylinder to the diameter so this this will going to be cancelled once and then simplification equation i am going to be writing fw is equal to pi by 4 sigma w dw length i can consider so this is going to be your the tensile forces are going to be generating inside the wires at the same time when the tensile forces are going to be generating then this material is going to be subject to the compressive force because that wire is going to be winding suppose to the your finger so then what happened while you are bending your finger so then you can observe that certain stresses are going to be generating that means the wire is not allowing to bend your finger now similarly in this case also this material is going to be subjected to the compressive stresses so now i'm going to be equating that means some resistance force is going to be developing inside the material so now i'm going to be equating this the force is going to be acting in the wire is equal to the resistance force acting in the material so on that basis i can develop the equation so i have considered here only the one side of the wire system i have considered while you are making the cross section there is the other side also cross section is going to be available so then what i am going to do i am going to be multiplying with the two over here that means the both sides i am going to be considering then these two will going to be cancelled here with the two times right and then i can keep it here the fw is equal to 5 by 2 sigma w dw into l right so now we are trying to find out the compressive stress that is the compressive force acting on that cylinder so then in this case what how we are going to be writing we know that is the compressive force is acting nothing but here the sigma c is nothing but the force is acting on the cylinder that is due to the wire that is going to be the load by area i am going to be considering so then how could you write here that same fc is going to be the load acting on that um, material that is equal to here we need to be take it here the thickness is going to be available that is the the 2 into l into t that i am going to be considered then fc is equal to that's going to be 2 into sigma c l into t i can take it so now we can see this is going to be the load is generated due to the wire and this is generated due to the that is this is the compressive forces developed inside the material that is the thickness of the material that is due to this wire so then what i am going to be taking fc is equal to fw i am going to be taking so on that basis i can find out your either sigma c or sigma w i can calculate it so here is the equation that writing to sigma c lt i can take it then pi by 2 sigma w dw into l so we know the length length will going to be cancelled and then i am going to be taking the sigma c is nothing but the compressive force is going to be acting on that cylinder sigma c so that's going to be pi by 4 t here the sigma w and dw i can take it so this is going to be the magnitude of your the sigma c right and then that is due to the the wire winding onto the the system once we calculated the, the compressive force acting in this material now i am going to be comparing the three three forces existed on this one can you see this inside this the cylinder we do have the fluid and it is exerting the pressure we know that is the pressure force is equal to p into d into l right and similarly 
we do have the resistance force is going to be developing inside the material that is equal to sigma 1 into 2 T L we have taken right this is going to be the area then the wires also absorbing some energy while it is pushing that is the internal pressure is going to be giving to the, uh, the thickness of the material and to the wires of the system. So then what happened that is the equation we got it. So then in this case what will happen I am going to be considering here that is going to be Fw is equal to Fp plus Fr equations I am going to be taking then the system is going to be getting into the equilibrium condition. Sorry here because the the force is going to be developing inside the material right. So this equation we are going to be modifying that the Fp is equal to the resistance force is going to be developing that is the Fr plus absorbing by the wire force. So this way we are going to be taking then only the system is into the equilibrium condition. Now I am going to be substituting these values that is going to be P into D into L. So this is going to be sigma 1 2 T L plus here 5 by 2 sigma W D W L we are going to be taking. In this case so the terminology of the L is going to be the common that I am going to be cancelled out. So then further this equation I am going to be simplifying. So after the simplification of this equation we are getting here P D is equal to 2 into sigma 1 T plus pi by 2 sigma W into D W. This is belongs to the wire and this is belong to the thickness of the material and this is belongs to the, the pressure developing inside the material. So then what I am going to do here. So I am going to be taking here the strain effect also I am going to be considering. So in this case the strain effect is going to be taken by the two parameter two components one is going to be your the thickness of the cylinder the second one is going to be the wire of the system. So we know that I am going to be considering here the wire of the strain is equal to the the strain of the the cylinder I am going to be considering here. So this is going to be the the cylinder. So then how could you write here and that is going to be here the wire we, we have to be considered. So that equation I am going to be writing here so that the cylinder is going to be that is going to be epsilon 1. So that is going to be epsilon 1. So that means in the direction of the circumferential direction we are going to be considering. So if you are considering the in this direction that is going to be sigma 1 by E minus mu into sigma 2 by E we are going to be considering and this is going to be equal to the sigma W by E I am going to be considering. So this way I can modify the strain effect in the wire that is equal to the cylindrical strain. So then I am going to be considering here that strain we know the Young's modulus is equal to stress by strain we are taking. So that equation we modified so that is going to be your stress by Young's modulus in the wire is equal to that I am going to be taking the W and here I can say that is going to be the cylinder Young's modulus right. So on that basis we are going to be writing this equation. So this is the way we are going to be calculating the, the what is the force is going to be developed inside the wire and then how it is giving back to the thickness of the material and then we have equated the developed pressure force is equal to the resistance force developed inside the cylinder plus the force in the wire on that basis we have calculated the equation. So this way we are going to be identifying the response of the system when we have these three condition. So I hope you are able to understand still if you feel any difficulty or confusion please put in the comment section so that I can reach you out.